Hi everyone, welcome back to Crochet Tutorials. In this video, we're going to make this adorable little Easter basket. It does look quite complicated, but I can assure you it isn't. It's certainly well within your skills. Um, it has these component features. So we have the bunny and his little chicken friend, and we have the basket filled with eggs. The basket itself will need to be a separate video so um, you'll find that linked here and the egg you'll be surprised probably to know but the egg and the bunny and the chicken all operate on the same pattern so you know certainly once you've mastered the egg then you have mastered the bunny and the chicken as well of course his ears are a different matter they're a very, very easy workup though, and you just sew them to the top of Mr. Bunny's head. Okay, if you've never um, been on the channel before, please take a moment to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you can be notified of all of the videos that get uploaded to the channel. Just a quick note on the basket. What you will need, this has a very robust handle, so I do recommend um, pipe cleaners, two pipe cleaners to make this as stiff as possible and then some sort of way of stuffing it with the, the grassy material just so it looks, you know, lovely and stuffed. Um, I've put six eggs in there and my chicken and my bunny sit on top which I think looks adorable. Um, you, however, may want to do this with less and your chicken and your bunny sit inside. Um, that's entirely up to you. But I made six eggs for this particular basket. All right, so for this video, we are looking at the egg pattern. Let's get started. Okay, so for these particular components, I am going to recommend a 10-ply yarn. Um, if you use an 8-ply yarn, it will just mean that your component pieces are a little bit smaller than this. And I do recommend if you're using an 8-ply yarn for your component pieces, then use an 8-ply yarn for your basket as well. And it'll be sized with the correct sort of relativity to the pieces. Just a point of interest, these guys are made in an 8-ply, I mean, sorry, a 10-ply yarn. This one was made in an 8-ply, but it's quite a, a chunky 8-ply. And you'll have a look at your yarn and go, you know what, that one's a thinner 8-ply than that one, and I can use that one instead. By all means, just use whatever looks right to you. This one is, is quite significantly bigger than even the 10-ply. Um, and that is because I've used two strands of a fairly thin eight ply. Um, the pink and the purple were two separate strands. Um, so I've held those together for the entire job. Um, it, entirely up to you what you do, but you do need to just make sure that they are fairly consistent across the board. I don't mind that my pink and purple egg is slightly bigger than my bunny because my pink and purple egg snugs down into the the basket anyway so that's no big deal for me to make these you will need your yarn of course and a corresponding hook this is a four and a half mil hook for my 10 ply yarn you'll need a yarn needle of course because we've got ends to sew in and a stitch marker if you don't have a stitch marker don't worry you can use a safety pin or you can use a paper clip if that's all you've got if all you have is a scrap of yarn, use that just when you go in to make your first stitch in any round and you pull up the two loops, lay a tiny scrap of yarn that's a contrasting colour um, across that and then yarn over and pull through and it'll sit there until the end of the next round. Okay, let's get started. This is really easy, but what we're going to do is we're going to increase in... Um, increments so if we increased really quickly we'd end up making a flat circle and we don't want that because 
no egg starts with a flat circle. Um, and we are going to work from the top down. So we need a magic ring, and if you aren't comfortable with making a magic ring, that's okay. There is a tutorial um, that I can link here, um, but I've made a, a slow example of how to make a magic ring. But essentially all we do is lay the yarn over our hands like this, the tail end, and then wrap it around the front of your fingers, come up and sort of cross it over so you've got this X on your hand. Grab your hook, go in under that first strand, grab the second, and just twist it up like that. So you've got a loop on your hook, but it's only held loosely. I always come in and grab that working yarn again and pull it through that loop. And the reason I do that is because I can actually take that off my hand now, dangle it about, and that magic ring doesn't budge. So if you don't do that second uh, pull or that pull through the loop, um, you will find that your magic ring will fall apart on you. And that is enormously frustrating when you're just starting a magic ring. If you really hate the magic ring and you've never had any luck with it, that's okay. Chain two and put all your stitches into the first chain or the second chain from the hook and it'll work just as well. You may find that you've got a bigger hole at the top. It's not a big deal. World's not going to fall apart if you've got a bigger hole there. All right, so for the first round, we're going to put six single crochet into this magic ring. If you're in the UK, you know this as the double crochet. You're essentially going straight into the ring, grabbing the yarn, two loops on your hook, yarning over and pulling through. And we need to do that six times. So six single crochet. Um, if your magic ring gives you trouble like that, just close it a tiny bit um, and then hang on to the stitches you've already made and that'll stabilize it. So we've got three, we need six, four, five, and six. Okay. And then we just close that ring by pulling on the tail end. And you can give yourself a reasonable tail, it doesn't matter, it's going to be stuffed inside um, anyway unless you're making the chicken so if you're making the yeah if you're making the chicken give yourself a little bit of a longer tail because this tail is actually going to make his little feathers on the top of his head but for now let's just concentrate on the egg shape body we've got six single crochets here for the next round we need to increase in every stitch and that literally just means putting two stitches in every stitch so that's two you can see that I haven't put my yarn or oh, my stitch marker in yet and that's because for this round it gets in the way and I find it just a bit annoying so I tend to just count for this first increase round so that's four five Now, essentially, once you get to this point, you're probably going to need to employ your stitch marker unless you're an absolute genius. Um, keep that hole as tightly closed as you can. And we are going to, in this round, just single crochet around. So as I mentioned, we don't want to expand and expand. We need to kind of move a little bit gradually down this egg. So if we just single crochet in each stitch now around, it will start to cup the top of the egg. Pop my stitch marker in that first stitch I made. And it'll make for a lovely gradual increase. And I don't count. I trust my stitch marker now. Um, you know, as long as you've put it in the first stitch you made in every round, um, when you're just single crocheting or doing a, a straight um, crochet around, 
I don't even bother counting. Um, and you know, someone's always going to come and try and distract you from counting. So whatever I can do to not count, I will. Um, all right. So that is my 11th and 12th stitch. Well, it should be. I haven't been counting. Um, and you can see that when I put that the right way, it started to make that little cup shape for the egg. All right, so for the next round, for round number three, we need to increase in every second stitch. And that's generally the way I, um, I frame this because it's easier in my mind if I know that I'm increasing every second or third or fourth or fifth stitch. It's easier in my brain. So essentially what that means is we're going to single crochet into the first stitch and this is the second stitch, we're going to increase in that. So that is two single crochets in that stitch. I'm going to come back. I know I've done three stitches, so I'm just going to count back three and put my stitch marker in. And then I know that I need to increase every second stitch. So what I do to make it easier for my brain, because I hate counting, is I tend to just go one, two, three, and I know that two and three need to be in the same stitch. Again, I'm just going to trust my stitch marker. One and two, three. Of course, when we get up to the, you know, bigger increase rounds on the basket, um, then, you know, it just, it's not every second stitch, it's every third, it's every fourth, it's every fifth. Um, but it's the same thing. So I'll show you that in the basket tutorial. And then one and two, three. Now for the end of this round, you should have 18 stitches. If you wish, you can count. I trust my stitch marker. Um, in the next two rounds, we are going to just single crochet around 18 stitches. So that is for round four and five, single crocheting around 18 stitches. I can leave you to do that. You don't have to watch me do that. I'll meet you up when those two rounds are finished. Okay, so we've finished those two rounds and your egg is starting to take shape. For the next round, which is round six, we need to single crochet in the next four stitches. So one two, three, and four, and pop in that stitch marker, four stitches back, one, two, three, four, that's where stitch marker goes, and then increase in the next st stitch, so two single crochets in the following stitch. And then we're going to single crochet into the next eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and then increase again, so two stitches in that next stitch. And then we're just going to single crochet into the remaining four stitches. So in this round, we're only increasing by two stitches and you should have a total of 20 stitches at the end of that round. Incidentally, you might see me kind of tugging on the yarn at the end of every stitch and I do that in Amigurumi because it just tightens up those stitches as much as I can possibly do. All right, so for round seven, we single crochet into the next nine stitches. So I go one, two, three, and then pop Mr. Stitch Marker in three stitches back. Four, five, six, seven, eight and 
nine and then we increase in that next stitch so two single crochets in that next stitch and then we repeat that so nine single crochets two three four five six seven eight and nine and we're going to increase we're going to put two single crochets into our final stitch that is the end of round seven now for round eight and nine we're going to do two rounds of 22 stitches we've got 22 stitches in there now and we're just going to do that around twice for round eight and nine so i'll see you back after rounds eight and nine are complete Alrighty, so that those two rounds, round seven and eight, are complete. Two rounds of single crochet straight around with 22 stitches in each round. That is actually our last round before we start to decrease now, because as you can see, it is almost the right size, but we need to decrease on the bottom. However, before we go anywhere, if you make the egg, of course, you just go straight into the decrease. But if you're making the bunny or Mr. Chicken, then you need to add eyes. And for Mr. Chicken, we need to add his little feathers. So I'm going to show you how to do that. With both of these pieces, I have used these really quite small little safety eyes. And that is simply because I'm pretty bad at embroidery. Um, so whatever opportunity I can take to not embroider, then I'm taking it. Um, the one caution that I will make is that, I don't know if you can see here around his eyes, he kind of looks like a member of Kiss with the little star around his eyes. That is actually the back cup of the safety eyes that's pressing on that yarn in the front. Can't really be helped. Um, I don't think it looks bad anyway, uh, and it certainly doesn't show up on the chicken. So it's because of that white yarn and actually this kind of grayish color um, your safety eyes might actually have white backs which would be great anyway um, so for the rabbit we need eyes for the chicken we need eyes um, we're going to make the ears for the rabbit in just a moment but i just want to show you how to make this little feather on the chicken so before we go any further just pop your the tail that comes out of that magic circle onto your yarn needle and then I just go back through the center of that magic circle just go straight back through there and pull it tight closes that circle a bit and then all I did was loop it over three times through there so just come back and I just did a loose loop um, so it depends on how big you want your um, feathers to be and then come out a different spot and oh, just make it at a different angle because um, we don't want all the feathers lining up but we oh that's too far in there we go and my last feather I think oh, yeah, place him about there so when you pull, obviously, that brings your, or tightens the loop on the other feathers. So, yep, that looks pretty cute. Um, so that's, that's essentially how you make the feathers. Now, if you've got a longer tail, you might want to do four feathers. It is entirely up to you. Um, but I'm actually not going to make the chicken i'm making the rabbit so i'm going to pull those out as best i can um i don't know what i might have done i might have actually okay. i'll 
do is pop that tail back inside. Um, back inside there. And it won't make any difference to the way that top looks. So that's back in there. That's how you do the feathers. Now, at this stage, we need to start looking at putting these eyes in. Now, I've put those eyes in in the one, two, three, four, five, between the sixth and the seventh round. Um, so, one, two, three, four, five. So, around here, um, just pop that one in. And I left uh, two stitches between. Um, and I reckon the two is right. You may decide to leave two or well, three stitches between, but I reckon two is pretty good. But have a look at, kind of looks like a ghost. Have a look at, you know, like turn it from every angle. Do you like the way it looks? If you're happy with it, then pop your backs on. If you're not happy or you're not convinced, just leave it. Those eyes won't fall out in the meantime. So we've got a couple more rounds to crochet before it's absolutely crunch time. And yeah, we can definitely leave the backs off for now. All right. So the backs are off, but the eyes are in. We've got round 10. And this is a decrease round. So what we're going to do is we're going to single crochet in three stitches. One two and three pop that stitch marker back in three stitches back and again and then we're going to decrease now this is oh, if my camera is ever going to focus i use the invisible decrease you can do the single crochet two together if you like which is putting your hook through under both loops and then pulling up a loop and then putting your hook through under the both loops of the next stitch and pulling up a loop and then single crocheting them all together. I kind of don't like that. I feel like it leaves major gaps and I'm not happy with it. Um, as you can see, you absolutely can't see any of my decreases in any of these rounds here. So what I like to do is the invisible decrease and essentially we just go in under the first loop, the front loop of the next stitch. And then I kind of turn my hook to grab that front loop of the next stitch with the hooky bit here. So, but we, we need to be under the front loop of both of those next two stitches. You can go in like that as well. You don't have to turn your hook and yarn over and pull through those two loops and then yarn over again and pull through and you have one stitch. So that's our first decrease. Then we're going to need to single crochet into the next four stitches. Two, three, and four, and decrease again. So under that front loop of the first stitch, under the front loop of the second stitch. So those three loops on the hook, and those two loops are pretty tight on the hook, but just yarn over, pull through those two, and then yarn over and pull through again. And then we repeat, single crochet in the next three. One, two, and three. And decrease in the front loop and in the front loop yarn over, pull through those two, yarn over, pull through. And then single crochet in four, two, three, and four. And our last two stitches are our decrease stitches. So again, front loop and and front loop and so that's our first decrease round and now we should have 18 stitches we went from 22 we decreased four times and now we're at 18 stitches 
Our next round is another decrease. So we're going to single crochet in two stitches at the beginning of this one. So single crochet, single crochet. Pop that stitch marker back in two stitches back now. And then decrease in the next stitch. So in the front loop, in the front loop, and yarn over, yarn over. Um, and then single crochet in the next three. One, two, and three. And decrease again. Front loop. If you are using just a single crochet two together, that's okay. Just be aware it will make bigger holes. Um, and then repeat. So we're single crocheting in the next two. One and two. And decreasing. Front loop. And front loop. Decrease. And then in the next three and decreasing. Now I've obviously done something wrong because I have a stitch left. So that's probably because I was talking and being distracted, but that's okay. Again, the world isn't going to end because I've got an additional stitch. That is absolutely fine. Because what's actually got to happen now is now we need to stuff. And so this is crunch time for your eyes. Do you like where they're placed? I'm perfectly happy with those. So we need to get in there and pop that back on that eye. And the other back on the other eye. Now... If you already popped your backs on, then you wouldn't be fiddling around as much as I am. But like I said, this is the absolute last opportunity to do this. Um, and we need to fill. So I've got fibre fill. I don't know what you prefer to use. Some people use um, old pillows. They wash the old pillow when it's come to the end of their life, wash and dry the old pillow, and then use that. For stuffing if you don't want to buy fiber fill um, you can use yarn scraps given that this guy is white yarn scraps can be a little bit difficult because they can be seen through the stitches um, but just stuff him fairly firmly if you're making the egg of course you don't have the eyes to bother you at the moment um, but yeah stuff it fairly firmly because there are few opportunities to pop more in so um, in fact, there's, there's really next to no opportunities. Um, here we go. He's kind of nicely stuffed. We don't want him to be too fat. I'm happy with that. All right. And then we're going to continue to decrease. And in this round, I just leave the stitch marker out because it's not really going to help me anyway. So I single crochet in this stitch and then decrease in the next. So just in those front loops, decreasing. And then single crochet in the next stitch and decrease in the next. And I'm going to do that around until I can't do it anymore. Until it's too difficult to, go, to do it. Single crochet in the next stitch and a decrease in the following stitch. And you will find that, yeah, you can probably single crochet in a stitch when it gets really tight, but it's that decrease that's going to be difficult. Um, so single crochet in this stitch and decrease in the next. Decrease. 
Now do try and decrease as long as you can. Um, but essentially once we get to about here, it's going to be diabolical. So what I'm going to do is just yarn over and pull through and give myself a decent tail because I'm going to sew this hole shut now. So pull out your working yarn and then just thread your yarn needle and you can see that there's this kind of point where that has tied off. I like to try and lay it down as much as possible. So what I do is just go into the next stitch and then the next stitch and just pull that tight. And what we're doing is just trying to lay that down. And then the next stitch. And you can see that as I'm doing these stitches around, it's gradually closing. You can just go meh, 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 across, <laughs> but I kind of prefer it to be a more gradual close. Um, and then, oh, hello. And then it looks a little bit neater. Um, and But, you know, if anyone is examining your eggs or your bunny and says, oh, gee, that's not very neat, then probably they're not going to get any Easter eggs. So, <laughs> you know, and, and most of the time you're going to make these for kids. But if you are planning on selling these at an Easter stall, then you do want them to be as neat as possible. And, you know, certainly for your own personal pride in your work, I'm sure you want them to be as neat as possible. So just try and close as neatly as you can. Sometimes it makes a lump and other times it doesn't, but it's not the end of the world. All right, so that, that's nice and closed. So what we do now is just grab a stitch and then make a knot and just go through that loop. Pull it tight and then bury the yarn end in the body just by going in and through pulling fairly tight and snipping it off and then that yarn end will disappear into the body and there we have a bunny rabbit with zero noses and zero ears all right let's make the ears okay probably prior to making the ears let's have a look at this nose um, I've embroidered this nose on the bunny here and as you can see, it's not the best embroidery job on the planet, um, but it'll do. And um, so I just thought you might like to see how to do that. I've got a piece of embroidery floss. It's not terribly long, but it is reasonably long. And um, all I'm going to do is thread a metal um, yarn needle with it. Um, I like to use the metal ones because they are a lot finer than the plastic ones and they definitely um, are easier to embroider with. So I just use one strand, um, other people double over. I don't tend to double over with this floss because it is actually quite big. So what you do need to do is to bury the yarn inside the body. Now, I don't worry about tying a knot on the back, um, but have a look at where you kind of want your nose. And, you know, you really want it to be a bit of a triangle, um, although I don't think mine's terribly triangular. Um, but, you know, you do want it to be a little bit triangular. So the top of my nose ends just under the bottom of the eyes. So that would be about this point here. So what I'm going to do is aim to come out through that particular hole. So I'm going to go in the back of his head and I'm going to aim for that hole. Got it first time um, with my needle and just pull that thread all the way through and until it isn't visible on the back anymore and then don't pull it from there and then I'm going to come down to about here and then come up just put my needle across the front of might go one stitch further across 
across the front of his face and that will make this arm of the triangle but I'll be in a position then to move to the next arm and I'm going to come back up here and again pop my needle out that bottom hole there I'm not going to pull too hard because I don't want to pull my yarn through I'm going to come back into this hole and out at the apex there so I can make the bottom of my triangle and then I'm going to see how that looks that doesn't look too bad for a nose and then it is just a case of filling it in so that can be a little bit more tricky because you're not sort of going into the same the exact same spaces anymore you've really just got to fill it in um, but as I've said before, and I'll say it probably every time, I am not a terribly good embroiderer. So, you know, I, I do prefer an embroidered nose on something this small to one of the, the store-bought um, noses. They tend to be a little bit bigger, um, so I have to embroider. But I did avoid doing the eyes. Um, and yeah, just continue to... Just continue to do that and until you're finished. Okay, so once you're happy with your nose, um, then just I tend to go into the corner again. So come back into your corner um, and I just make a tiny little stitch in the corner or actually go that it doesn't matter where you go in and out but you just in in fact want to end in a corner any corner will do and then pass your needle through that loop to make a knot and that knot should end up right in that corner so tighten it up and then go back into the corner and embed the tail into the head of the bunny. Just pull it a bit tight, cut it off. Whoop. Tried to roll away. And there it is. So that's our bunny's nose. So let's get started on the ears. Okay, so when you've finished those seven rounds of ten single crochets around, you will have something that looks like this. I've taken my stitch marker out. Um, what we're going to do is just decrease slightly. So we're just going to single crochet three. So one, two, and three and then we're going to decrease in the next two stitches so decrease decrease and then we're going to repeat that so single crochet in the next three it can get quite tight um, but it's doable and then decrease in those remaining two stitches. And then just yarn over and pull through a fairly long loop because we need that to sew on to the head of our bunny. But first, what we need to do is just thread your needle with your tail and you need to kind of make this so it folds at the base and 
end is still nice and flat at the top. So then we're just going to sew across this opening here to keep that folded together. And just come up a bit higher and it'll stick together. And once we've done that, that's lovely, then we need to sew them, of course, onto Mr. Bunny. But you need two of these ears. So make the other one exactly the same. Make a magic ring, single crochet five into it. Increase in every stitch in the next round. So you've got a total of 10 stitches. Then do seven rounds of 10 stitches to get your ear. And then in that final round, you need to single crochet three, decrease, single crochet three, and decrease, and tie off, and sew them together like that. Leave that tail on there, because that's going to help us stitch that to our bunny who was lying face down. Um, and I'll see you when you've got the other one on, or when you've got the other ear ready. Okay, so when you've got both of your ears, just make sure that the tail is actually coming out of the bottom of the ear rather than the side here. So just pass your needle through down to the bottom and that's going to make it a lot easier for you to sew the ears on. So essentially with this one I sewed them so they're almost touching at the top. You can sew them on however you like though but I do think that um, that slight togetherness at the top is going to be, it, it is the cutest. So, okay. So this one, I mean, a lot of people will pin pieces of amigurumi, and I do as well. Um, obviously, I'm actually attached to the wrong ear here. Um, I do as well, um, but not on something this small, so... All right, that's about where I want that. So essentially, I just go in and grab a piece directly underneath where I wanted that placed. And actually, you've got a fair bit of wiggle room with something like this. So you can, you know, sort of move it around prior to actually firmly attaching it. So I just sort of make sure that I'm still happy with the placement Yep, that looks pretty good. And just go into the body and completely lose your thread. Um, and then into the actual piece to stitch it on. And it won't be difficult. And you don't need a lot of stitches to secure this. Um, however, if it is being given to a child, for example, and, you know, they, they might actually play with it. They might, hopefully, they'll play with it. They'll get a bit boisterous with it. So do make sure that they are firmly attached. But you don't need to, you know, go overboard with stitches. So you do want it sitting upright a fair way. Make sure your stitches are actually attaching the ear to the body rather than just continually going around that body. So it can be a little bit tricky, especially where you folded it um, because it, there's quite stitch dense in there. So, um, but yeah, certainly it really is, there's no exact science. To sewing on something this small um, given that we're using the same color yarn as the body's made you don't see the stitches at all if you were you know sewing white ears to a, a brown bunny um, then that would be a different story and we'd want to be a lot more careful with where we're placing these stitches but certainly at this stage um, with white and white we've got no dramas really um, all right, I'm just going to put one more stitch back in the ear. If I can even find a place to go in. And I'm going to make a knot. And 
once again we just need to pass that thread down into the body of our rabbit and cut it off okay so that is one ear i hope that was in screen i was watching what i was doing rather than the screen but you can see that when you sew the other ear on it's going to look adorable all right so i'll leave you to sew those on put your little bit of blush remember that if you're doing the egg it is exactly the same as the body you don't need to put eyes on you don't need to embroider a nose and you're certainly not making ears with the chicken you do those three loops um, prior to actually putting the eyes on and that gives you your little feathers and you just need to embroider a little beak the way you did a nose but you can see that um, my nose and my beak are slightly different shapes and that's just because one's a bird and one's a rabbit um, <laughs> I made six to fit in the basket um, hopefully I will see you for the basket tutorial and um, I do wish you all the best with your Easter designs thank you so much for joining me I'll see you next time